Should marijuana be legal? That is the question of the center of our week-long special, America's High, the case for and against pot. We've interviewed Melissa Etheridge, who said she used medical marijuana after her diagnosis of breast cancer. We've also taken on a road at a, on a raid at a national forest where Mexican drug cartels are planting marijuana gardens. As the battle rages, marijuana keeps entering this country. This week, Border Patrol agents in California found nearly 200 pounds of pot hidden in two vehicles. These pictures from that seize, seizure. Arrests were made in both instances. There are places right here in America, though, where it's perfectly okay to own and smoke pot. And tonight, you're going to meet a legal pusher of the drug who believes it can help sick people. Joe Johns reports. If marijuana has a future as a legitimate business in this country, Paul Stanford of Portland is a true pot pioneer. I feel a little bit more relaxed. I can feel that I've had a couple of little puffs here. Call it his yes. Oregon Trail. For 25 years, he's pushed to legalize marijuana. In fact, for the last decade, he's hosted a cable access show on it. Bring out our infamous dancing cannabis leaves. He founded what he says was the first medical marijuana consultation and referral service in Oregon. The company has amassed files on 64,000 patients in eight states where medical marijuana is legal, matching people who want it to doctors who can provide it. Stanford says it's a $3 million a year business. These plants are also Stanford's. He's licensed by the state to grow them for medical marijuana. He gives it away in closed-door meetings like this. The next frontier for this pioneer? We need to take this market out of the hands of the kids and substance abusers who control it today and put it in the hands of the state where the age limit's strictly enforced and where we can get tax revenue. He's trying to get an initiative on the ballot here in Oregon that would allow for state taxation and regulation of marijuana, but he's failed in past efforts to legalize it here. It doesn't cost much to raise these plants. The whole operation runs on a shoestring, basically. But if this were scaled out so that marijuana was being sold all over the country and it were legalized. There are some people who say the cost to society would be much greater than the benefit. It's a guessing game, but a moderate estimate says if marijuana were decriminalized, it would save about $13 billion from not having to enforce marijuana laws. And if pot were taxed like alcohol and cigarettes, it would mean about $7 billion, a net gain for government of $20 billion. But that's not a complete picture. Comparing alcohol to pot, one professor at USC said alcohol taxes only cover about 10% of alcohol-related costs, like drunk driving. And tobacco taxes only cover about 20% of tobacco-related medical costs. So what about marijuana? If legalized, would we see more accidents or lower worker productivity? And what about health effects, higher insurance rates? In Paul Stanford's garden, it's all blue sky. That's assuming that marijuana is like alcohol and tobacco, and it isn't. Marijuana is a healthy alternative and much safer than alcohol and tobacco. But what about the cartels and the brutal international drug trade? Those who support legalization say it will stem the violence. But critics say the cartels will simply slash their prices or ramp up trade in other drugs like cocaine or methamphetamine. Stanford says there's no proof that would happen. And he remains confident in the mantra of legalization. Marijuana is a lot safer than alcohol, has a lot of medicinal benefit. And so if we look at the science, uh, we're going to win. But given the national experience with legalized recreational drugs, who knows where this Oregon Trail will lead? Joe John, CNN, Portland. Before the break, we introduce you to a man in Oregon, a pot pioneer of sorts, who believes that science shows marijuana has health benefits. Does it? One doctor we spoke to this week calls pot the best medication he's ever worked with. Others say it's a potent, addictive, gateway drug with dangerous side effects that ruins lives and families. Both sides have studies to prove their case. So what exactly are the facts? Let's try to get some answers. From 360 MD, Dr. Sanjay Gupta joins us. Now, Sanjay, let, let's get at it. Are there benefits to medical marijuana? I mean, is there a case for its use? Because the patients we talk to swear by it. Uh, yeah, well, the answer is yes. I mean, there are some medical benefits uh, to, to marijuana, and this is more than just anecdotal evidence now, Anderson. There are some studies to sort of back that up. 
we know that there are receptors in the brain, cannabinoid receptors, and they, they control things like your pain levels, your hunger levels, uh, things uh, related to your mood. And therein lies some of the possible benefits medically of marijuana. For example, someone who's having uh, terrible malnourishment or terrible nausea as a result of chemotherapy or being infected with HIV AIDS, using marijuana could stimulate appetite. Neuropathic pain, Anderson, something I deal with quite a bit as a neurosurgeon, it's that lancinating nerve pain that is often caused by trauma or some sort of injury or surgery. Uh, sometimes it can be very refractory to pain medications. Marijuana can help there as well. Uh, multiple sclerosis, uh, something else that I, I uh, treat, uh, that, that's something that ca causes significant tremors, for example. Marijuana can help. But the caveat, Anderson, is that sometimes other medications, which we know more about, may be better alternatives. So it can help, but, you, but there might be other things that m even better. Is there medical evidence that it, that it can be dangerous? I mean, what, what, is, what do doctors say? Well, m most of the studies on this uh, really look at uh, some of the shorter-term effects of marijuana. It is hard to make the statement right now about the longer-term dangers of marijuana. Uh, the medical community as a whole, uh, for example, the American Medical Association, is against the smoking of marijuana. I mean, that is a stance that they take as an organized medical association. But there are several areas in the brain, again, that marijuana affects. The hippocampus, uh, Anderson, is an area that's responsible for memory. So short-term memory problems is something uh, that is often cited. Also, the, the developing brain. Is marijuana, does it have somehow a greater impact on the developing brain? There are studies on this, although as I look through them today even, not conclusive. It's a real concern. There's also, you know, this idea that you, you talk about THC, the active ingredient that Joe Johns was talking about, a lot of the other pieces this week, but there are 300 other compounds or so as well. And, and what exactly do they do? And finally, this issue that you raised, Anderson, about addiction. Uh, is it addictive? You're going to find conflicting studies, uh, not an exact number, but anywhere between 5 and 9 percent of people who smoke marijuana regularly uh, could become addicted. Take a look there as compared to other substances, tobacco, 31 percent, heroin, 23, cocaine, 17. You can see the numbers there, and you have cannabis at the bottom, 9 percent. So there is that risk as well, Anderson. Because, uh, I mean, a lot of the people, like Melissa Etheridge, I said the addictive question, and she basically just laughed and said, look, absolutely not. There's no way it's physically addictive. Addictive. Other people say, well, maybe psychologically there, there it has some addictive. I mean, do you, does one make a, a difference between possible psychological addiction and physical addiction? That's, that's a great question. And when you talk about addiction, typically from a medical standpoint, you are talking about some sort of physical addiction. So the body changes in some way. It could be a mood-related thing, but associated with that mood, you may have uh, you know some some sort of uh, physical manifestations of the withdrawal. So uh, there are criteria for withdrawal. Uh, we got a text question. I want to get to Matthew from New Mexico. Asked, can we not obtain the medical benefits? marijuana without smoking it. So how about that? I, I mean, there is this federally approved drug on the market, Marinol, um, that treats the same symptoms that medical marijuana does. Some people say it doesn't work fast enough. Mm, yeah. it, is Marinol just not a, a, a decent substitute? I, I don't think we're there yet. It's a synthetic form of THC. So the advantage, you get rid of a lot of those other compounds that we don't know a lot about. One of the disadvantages you just mentioned, it's a pill, so it may not work fast enough. One thing about uh, using marijuana, either smoking it or vaporizing it, is you can titrate it a little bit more easily, so you can get the, uh, the, the, the appropriate dose with the pill. Uh, you may take too much or too little. It's, it's a little bit harder to titrate. All right. Interesting information. Good facts. Sanjay Gupta, appreciate it. Thanks, Sanjay. Thanks, Anderson. Tomorrow, Special on Pot continues. A stunning report on how the collapse of the housing market may be fueling the growth of marijuana. Here's a preview. A three-bedroom ranch, a cut lawn, a family of three, and a $500,000 a year illegal business in just one room. This is what could only be described as a, a pot factory in a garage on a suburban street in Miami. Look at just the, the water system that brings the water to every individual plant that's in one of these pots. And these plants, seven feet tall, just all in a garage that you would not notice from the street. Fascinating. Up next to tonight, though, a cold case solved. A boy who disappeared in 1950.